So today is a nice day for us. We're sitting here together with uh, David Marsh. Welcome, David. Thank you. David is uh, the founder and um, the head coach of the Team Elite in San Diego, California. And since 2016, he's also the professional advisor of the um, Israeli Swimming Association. This is the Swimming Association um, led by head coach, head trainer, Luca Gabrillo. And uh, David is helping uh, this team out to have the best performance uh, possible at the Olympic Games of Tokyo 2021, this July. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you. Great to be here. We're loving our stay so far, and we love your uh, the resort. It's been fantastic so far. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're happy. We're very happy to have you here. Yeah. We're happy to hear that as well, because uh, it's very important for us to uh, offer you in this very difficult situation. I yeah. think you've been preparing for more than a year already for these Olympic Games. Yeah. I think uh, it's very uh, important to have a good training camp, to have good conditions with this nice weather we're yes. having here at Tenerife. Yes, I think you always have good weather here, it seems we like. Do. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, do, yeah, it's amazing. But you have always good weather in We have very good well. weather there as well, but uh, but here it's a, it's a very friendly environment, the people are a little bit more relaxed, I think, with the island culture. Uh, I've been to Hawaii many times and it reminds me a little bit of Hawaii here in Tenerife. This is, yeah. I was only here in January and this is the second time I'm here, you know, two months later. And I love it more all the time. And, and really? no, for, for no sh uh, small matter, it has it been because of the quality training that they're doing. And that has a lot to do with uh, the, the, the quality place we're staying, quality of food, the attitude of the employees. And I think that all those kind of things help to create a, a culture that encourages people to be their best. And uh, athletes training for the Olympics, they're not training just for one year, they're training for five years. Now, in this case, five years, usually four years. But now this one with the COVID, then five years of training. And in this window of time, from a physiological perspective, this is probably the most important window of time to train really well. Like all the pieces piece of the puzzle start coming together this far out. So it's a very important time. and. I think uh, in, in, in no small part because of the total environment you're offering here at, the, uh, at, the, at the, the suite here, I think it's happening beautifully. Fantastic, thank you. Do you have the feeling that it's you have mm, more work on the mental part now, uh, being this time period so long for them, like uh, having lost their illusion of the Olymp yeah. Olympic Games of last year, having them postponed, and I think we can be sure that they will take place this year but still there might be a little bit of uh, doubt. Uh, do you feel like you have to work more on that mental part? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I think everybody, anybody that's helping to manage people has to work on the mental part. And uh, just the, really from the basic level of mental health in general, just baseline, making sure you're okay as a, as a person. And I think that's a sort of a check-in that uh, we ask them to do all the time. And, and then as coaches, and we had our sports psychologist here for a little while checking in on them also, uh, we, we really look at that first and we make sure they're okay as human beings and to make sure they're ready to train well. And once they're ready to train well, then we offer them the training, uh, oftentimes very challenging training that, uh, that, that pushes them further than perhaps they would push if they were going on their own. Uh, so I would say this is a really important time for uh, the mindset and uh, the, the having the ability to, to, to bring out the best in yourself, not only because of the calendar date, but because of the COVID year that we've spent locked up and, uh, and being here in Tenerife and feeling like we're open and breathing and enjoying the weather and the, you know, sort of the veranda we're here right now. Every, every night we're eating sort of outdoor, you know, balcony, which is beautiful and so it feels liberating, really. Do, do you think that, um if they make the Olympic Games now, that they will be better prepared than any other Olympic athletes? Do you, think, do you feel they will be stronger athletes than any other before? Uh, I mean, I don't think so. They, around the world, different every, every country and even every athlete has different conditions. Some have had swam right through the, the, the COVID. They've had pools and they've had access to training. They've had access to all their normal routines. Many like us in San Diego, we had a, a big abrupt change to our regular schedule. We were actually uh, uh, sort of uh, going on to military bases and odd times to, it, to figure out how to swim and then we would use backyard pools. We had a 20 meter backyard pool that we were swimming in for a little while that, that a friend owned. 
Uh, so we sort of swam wherever we could. A lot of them took up surfing, so they would be out in the ocean yeah. at least doing something in the water. And so we just sort of figured it out. Uh, but I do think that, that a lot of the story will be some of the athletes that didn't have perfect training conditions still will achieve at the highest level. They'll, they'll still be winning gold medals, silver medals, and bronze medals. I, I believe that's going to happen. And in some cases, maybe it's because we, we all need to learn that you know, sometimes the ability for the body to recover is as important for the body to train hard. And um, your, I've, I've read and heard you're considered a magic man. Uh -huh. You have like a, a, some way a secret talent or magical talent that makes that um, people in a very short time period um, can have a very, very different performance, or, or right. uh, you have some tricks to make people perform in a very small period of time, very well. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Can we can we know a little bit the about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's the trick. The trick is to get them to feel really good about themselves and their and what they're about to do. Be confident in it. And be and know all the processes that they're going to do. Like in the next two days, tomorrow morning we're going to swim a mock uh, Olympic final. We're going to wear Thursday. We're going to swim the preliminaries. Friday in the morning we're going to swim the finals because that's when they're swimming the Olympics. And then Saturday we're going to swim. Uh, so we're going to swim the semifinals, then the finals. So we're going to go through that process. So you try to make it to where the athletes get to the blocks with no surprises. Everything's planned. Uh, the more things that they can control. The more th and they, that they know is going to happen on a timeline, the better. And then there'll be some twists and turns, and then you make them, you help make them resilient and adaptable. And uh, so we work on that sometimes. Like there'll be times I'll uh, have them do a hard race when they're not expecting it, and I just say, get up on the blocks right now, 100 percent, go. You know. So I think there's. Uh, That's the resilience part. Yeah, the, ma the magic part is really, I think, uh, a combination of really challenging, challenging them outside their comfort zone and then putting them deep in their comfort zone so that they know their why behind what they're doing yeah. and they're comfortable with the, the, the if, if they don't succeed, that it's not life and death and that they can, they'll be able to go back home and the families will love them, their friends will love them. Yeah. And so some of the, the they're able to some more relax that way. And, uh, and I ne very, very seldom will talk about the goal of just the performance. It'll always be about the process toward the performance. And I think if anything, those kind of things have happened. And I've been very fortunate to have, because at the end of the day, honestly, it's about the athlete. It's not about the coach. I mean, we can, we can, we can mess them up more than we can help them because they're, they're, they're gifted, beautiful athletes. You know, God gave them the talent and they're executing on their talent with a training program. And uh, oftentimes that training program even is helped designed by them by the time the mature athletes, like most of the athletes we're dealing with here, which are anywhere between 20 and 20, well actually we have a 35 year old here, between 20 and 35 years old. Uh, but in the last Olympic Games I had a summer win the Olympic gold medal and that it, it was 35 years old. So, you know, that's not too old and, uh, you know, you got to keep believing and, and so we, we pour into that right now. All about belief. Okay. I'm 45. Hi. There's no illusion for me to be ever an Olympic uh, athlete, uh, but yeah. I'm trying to swim a little bit better. Beautiful. So I decided a couple of months ago Great. that I I would love to feel more flow in the water, like more confident in the water. So I started training with one of our local coaches here, mm -hmm. uh, very our favorite uh, swimming trainer, which is I think you know Nico Hill. Yes, of course. Uh, he's yes, nice, eh? he's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I tried. Uh, I I started swimming with him, but I um, I feel like I still fight a little bit with the water. Okay. What is for you the First trick for a beginner. Um, yep. What do I really need to know to be more confident uh, in a swimming pool? Yeah, I think what the first thing about swimming is 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 the uh, being comfortable in the water. Just literally being comfortable with floating, putting your face under the water, relaxing in the water, uh, breathing full breaths in and out. I mean, before you try to propel yourself down the pool, you should just learn how to be comfortable uh, in that environment. Yeah. Uh, some of the tricks are to early on put on put on fins to give yourself a little bit of extra propulsion and that gives you confidence and uh, make sure you have good goggles that don't leak 
Uh, you also can, you know, if you know if, if you don't like water going in your ears and nose, there's earplugs, there's nose plugs, there's all kinds of ways to help uh, swimmers feel the most comfortable possible. In San Diego, I even have a lot of the new newer athletes wear wetsuits because the wetsuits help them float more, okay. and uh, and that just gives them more confidence. So a lot of it's just relax, a little bit of propulsion, and then uh, coaches like Nico and other coaches can give you advice as to how to swim. I have lots of stuff online. You can type in you know David Marsh swimming, and there's all kinds of stroke techniques that you can look up. Uh, usually for more advanced athletes, but for new athletes, it ha for new athletes it has to do with more with uh, getting a proper position in the water, so getting in the top layer of the water, so you're not swimming like this. Mm -hmm. you're, you're swimming with, swimming with a good kick, and that propels you forward. And then rhythm and balance. Swimming is rhythm and balance also. So it's uh, there's a bit of an art to proper swimming. If you ever notice a advanced swimmer, they look like they're doing it effortlessly, right? They look like they're going easy yeah. across the pool, and that's you know, not always. They they, they, the they weren't how always. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, the good news is, if you're not quite as good in technique, you uh, you actually burn more calories. You yeah. get more work done, right? That's so true. that's the positive. That's true. I've got I've got this activity watch, and yeah, I yeah. feel like you oh, I work. see. I have the proof that I burn more calories when I swim my way. <laughs> well, you actually do. You know. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> you know, you, but you want to learn because you want to enjoy it. Because uh, you, I mean, in Tenerife, if you would want to be, uh, a, a, you know, an advanced swimmer, the pool's right here. The pool's on your property. I mean, yeah, they're beautiful yeah. and big, and there's plenty of space to, to do even laps in there if you if you want yeah, to. Yeah, so there's there's lots of there's water everywhere in Tenerife. Yeah, that's water everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been able to enjoy your villa as well? Have you had a good time here? Yes, I have. I think the the thing about the having a villa versus just a hotel room, is you really feel like it's a home, right? So upstairs is sort of where we're resting and, and, and showering. Downstairs is my when I walked out walked out to come here. My wife was stretched out on the uh, on the, the the chair in the back uh, the back deck area reading her book, and it was it was wonderful. Yeah. So I think uh, having a little space to spread out, which isn't always the case in Europe. You know, sometimes you have you really you're really in smaller places. Uh, having the ability to walk around and, and play ping pong or go for a swim or, or have the different amenities that you have here, uh, even the weight room and these kind of things is, is really quite advanced over what I've experienced again if I was to compare them to many of my stays in, in different places in Europe. So I think you guys have done a great job of developing a place where people can stay for long stays. We're here for three weeks and I don't feel one bit like I'm the walls are closing in on me. I feel like I'm settling in more not uh, not getting more anxious about you know being here for too long. I'm happy to hear this because I think um, we're making we're having a good collaboration now with Tenerife Top Training, having you guys here, having had the other uh, swimming federations of other islands, and uh, to be so close to Tea Tree and form like a little village, like a very yes. safe haven, like a very safe bubble. Uh, is nice for us and is apparently very important for you as well. Yeah, I think one of the big things too is being able to walk and walk back and forth across the pool. I mean, I'm hearing a coach, you know, say go and stop right now from across the pool. You know, you just feel the the feeling of excellence all around, and it's not just swimming. I mean, I'm walking in every day. I'm watching the volleyball players with amazing volleyball players doing working out. I'm seeing different athletes and in, in different areas over there and I think all that matters along the street right in front of the in front of the suites people are running all the time there's yeah. a very active place uh, I've been down to uh, La Calente and been you know been to the some of the restaurants uh, you know and, and enjoying some really fine food down there every once in a while is a little change uh, and so yeah I think I think actually this location is perfect you, you, I don't think you can get a better location for T3 because the ac the access and priority of training of course is number one but the ability to sort of walk down the hill and get a little change of atmosphere, yeah. dive in the ocean down there if you want to, or it's a pretty quick drive like I've done to Los Gigantos and to, to go navigate and look around other parts of the island. You can sort of get out of here quickly and be on the, on the main interstate, which is an amazing interstate by the way. There's no road that good in San Diego. Okay. So that's okay. such a nice road. And soon it's gonna be all the way around the island. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, fabulous and so, I think uh, this is if this is only the beginning of my stays here. I'm going to be very happy, and I'm going to be very happy to come back. We'll see you back then. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I think that's going to be that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for this, for having taken the time uh, to be here with us. Thank you very much for having come here, and uh, we wish you all the luck for Tokyo 2021 with all the athletes you've been training over the last five years. 
lots of luck. We're gonna follow you on Thank the television, you. Yes. of course. Yes. We're gonna support you from here, and I hope to see you back soon. And I hope that one, you know all your employees who have been so gracious to us uh, during this time when we're here uh, feel part of this too. You know, if, they, if these athletes win medals and they uh, accomplish final mm -hmm. swims, which would be amazing for any of these athletes. Uh, I hope I want everybody to know that they had something to do with it. So make sure your your employees and the folks that uh, made our visit so so warm and welcoming that uh, they know they made a difference. Okay, I'll, I will tell them for sure. Thank they you. will be very happy to hear that. Yeah. And thank you so sure. much for those words. Yeah, my, my, my pleasure. And uh, thanks again for having me. And cheers. cheers. <laughs> And we want you to believe in possibilities.